everybody, and welcome to Outdoor Ventures. I'm Frozen, and thanks for joining me. Well, it's about that time that I made my 2018 gear list loadout video. First up, I want to talk about one thing before we start. This is an ultralight setup. This whole war thing that's going on between traditional backpacking and ultralight backpacking, the ultralight backpackers think they're better than traditionalists, and the traditionalists think they're better because they're carrying more for ultralight backpackers. It's just ridiculous. It, it makes me so tired to hear about it. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. If you want to carry the weight, or if you don't want to carry the weight, and you got your system dialed down and you're safe about it, as long as you're outside being respectful and you're comfortable with hiking, who cares what your base weight is? This just happens to be an ultralight base weight just because I've dialed my system down over the years and I know what I want and I know what I need. There are some comfort items in here, not a lot, but this is what I need for any backpacking trip and I've never been uncomfortable. So with that being said, to save time on this video, I'm gonna list the name of the product, the weight in ounces, and the weight in grams for our metric friends. So with that being said, let's get started. So let's start with my clothing from the ground up. First up, the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. I love this shoe. It's taken care of a lot of health issues for me, including my IT band and plantar fasciitis. They're great. I think there's 350 miles on here. This tread is still good, though it is starting to wear out, starting to get a little bit of wear and tear on the back of the heel. But other than that, these shoes have been amazing and hopefully they can last me about 100 more miles before I start the Appalachian Trail. Right on top of the shoe, I use a pair of Dirty Girl Gaiters, and they're basically designed to keep rocks, sticks, and debris out of your shoes. Absolutely love them. For socks, I love the Darn Tough Vermont Quarter Cushion Socks. These are ankle socks. These are absolutely amazing. The only thing I wish they would do is I wish they would dry out just a little faster, but getting the Quarter Cushion Socks, you pay the price. I have really no reason to switch with these. Been using these for years. They got a lifetime warranty and they're freaking amazing. This is a new product of, for this year. These are the Patagonia Strider running shorts. They have a really, really nice, um, I'm gonna call it a diaper style liner. I've tried a lot of running shorts over the years and I seem to always get chafed or the liner is just too small to keep everything in <laughs> and comfortable. This is really, really nice. They have four mesh pockets, and then on the back, there's a zipper pocket for your key. I uh, don't have a lot of testing in these, but the initial tests, the initial hikes that I do have, so far, these have been awesome. So we'll stick with them and see how it goes. For a shirt, I wear the Champion Vapor shirt. This thing is really, really fast drying. It's moisture wicking. It's a synthetic shirt, really cheap. I've been using this for several years now, I believe, and it just really dries fast and keeps me cool and comfortable. On the top of my head, still, I'm using the Buff. It's been four years with this one. Uh, it's probably time to replace it. it smells really bad, but uh, whatever, it works very, very well. You can use it as a bandana, which is what I use it for most of the time. During colder weather, you can use it as a beanie to keep your ears and head warm. Or if you know you just get to camp and you're all sweaty or you need to wipe down your tarp, it also works well for uh, kind of like a dry rag. The pack that I used the majority of this year was the Z-Pax Nero. Now it is a frameless pack with all the additions, including the shoulder pockets and the padded hip belt pockets. It comes in around 14 ounces, I believe, and that includes the little sit pad that they give you. This is removable, you can take this out. It's a great, great idea, really comfortable really light and I'm able to get four, probably five days in this thing. I think any longer than that, I would probably go back to my Z-Pax Arc Hall, which is also an amazing backpack. So let's talk about the side pockets first. Let's get these out of the way. I carry two one liter smart water bottles with the sports cap on it. I don't like water bladders. Just, I like knowing how much water I have, I like just reaching in my pack, pulling the bottle out, taking a drink and then putting it back. Also, this helps a lot with just you know being able to squeeze water into your pot, boil it, and then you're done. Instead of just holding that bite valve and trying to filter in a water bladder, it's just that's just not for me. So two smart water water bottles. All right, let's dive into the mesh right here. This is my tarp. I'm using a hammock setup. 
This is a Dyneema composite fabric, formerly Cuban fiber tarp from Hammock Gear. This is the standard tarp with the doors. I have a Dutchware continuous ridge line on here, just makes adjusting it a heck of a lot easier. Um, you'll see I also have a pair of hookworms that come down onto the sides of the tarp. It just makes setup a really easy task to do whenever you get to camp. So Hammock Gear tarp, I think it weighs like right under 10 ounces. It's perfect. While we're talking about that, let's talk about the tent stakes. I am using the MSR Groundhog tent stakes and on these, I leave my guy lines attached. That way my guy lines aren't tangled up when I take out my tarp. I like it better this way. And then on each guy line, I do have a Dutchware gear hookworm that like I said, hooks right onto the tarp and allows for easy, easy setup. And I keep that in a Z-Pax Cuban fiber tent stake bag, works out great. Wish it was a little bit bigger though, but that's just me. For water filtration. So this system consists of a two liter ever new bag. Now this is a brand new bag. I did end up popping my last bag after a full year of use. So I'm not sure if I can recommend this anymore. I do have the knock Vecto that they just sent me. So probably gonna try that out. The only thing I don't like about the Vecto is it's a little too squishy for me. And it takes a little bit longer to filter. However, it seems to be a good product, but what I'll do with this is I'll just attach my Sawyer squeeze on it and filter my water that way. I have an additional um, cut off, just a little, I think it's a Dasani bottle, where I can scoop the water out and pour into the bag if it's not coming off like a little waterfall, if it's just like standing water from a creek or something like that. And it works out great, really light system. Really have no complaints, but we gotta see about the Evernew bag and the durability over the next couple months here. For rain protection, I have my four-year-old Helium 2 rain jacket. Now this jacket is done. Uh, they do have a lifetime guarantee on it. I'm starting to soak through on here even after washing it. So what they've done for me is they've actually guaranteed the product for life. Talked to them and they're sending me an RMA. They're sending me a brand new jacket. So cannot be happier with not only the product, but also the customer service I've received from Outdoor Research. To pair that up, I have a Z-Pax Cuban Fiber rain kilt. Now I know some of the people out there think that this is stupid, but for me, this is amazing. So what you do is you wrap it around yourself, you zip it down in the back, and then you tighten it right here. And not only does this protect you from the rain, but you can use it as a ground sheet under my hammock for my pack or my shoes, or to sit down on a log if it's wet. Um, I've also been using it this year to get by a plant called the stinging nettle, which if you're familiar with Pennsylvania or stinging nettles, it just sucks walking through that on the trail. So I've used that quite a bit to kind of shield my legs because I don't like to wear pants. I like to wear running shorts and the stinging nettle just stabs you and burns you the whole time you're walking through the trail. Uh, finally, to clear out the mesh pocket, I have a simple Ziploc one gallon freezer bag. This is where I put all my garbage throughout the day and then I pack it out and then hang it in my food bag at night. So this is where all the garbage goes and it just sits on the mesh pocket on the outside of my backpack. So this shoulder pocket, what I'll usually do is I'll keep my Sony headphones in here. I like to listen to music sometimes I'm on the trail. Uh, not often, maybe just in the morning to kind of get me going and I'll also have a lighter on the outside of the pack just for easy access. On this pouch, I usually have my food, so there's nothing in there right now, but I usually keep it, you know, just some snack mix and a Ziploc a freezer bag. In this pocket or the mesh, depending on if these are wet or not, I'll have an extra pair of darn tough quarter cushion socks. Love them, obviously, I've talked about them before. In here, I will carry my headlamp and an extra charging cable. Um, most of the time, I'll have this in an electronics bag in the pack, but just for ease of access and showing you this is my headlamp system. So this is a rechargeable Nightcore NU25. It has a red light feature, it has a white feature, it has a, um, a white light and a beam feature. This thing is amazing. Uh, it usually lasts for about four days. It's not the longest lasting battery, but it is very, very light and I have the Lightsmith headband mod. It's really, really comfortable. It adjusts pretty much the way you'd want a headlamp to adjust and this is like one of my favorite pieces of gear this year was using the Petzl Actic didn't have a lock mechanism as you can see this has a lock 
and this way I can just throw it in my pack, not have to worry about it, and like I said, it's USB rechargeable. So that's just excellent for the weight. The last little thing on the outside of the pack is I keep a little bottle of Purell hand sanitizer. You always want to make sure your hands are sanitized. I don't care who you are, this is non-negotiable item, just bring this and keep yourself clean, especially your hands. All right, let's dive into the pack. Now, what I'm showing you is exactly how I'd pack this internal pocket. So you're seeing it just from the top down. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so in here I'll have another one gallon Ziploc freezer bag. This is where I keep my food for the day. So I'll actually, I call it staging. Um, before I hang my food at night, this will go in there too, obviously, but I'll put all the food I need for breakfast, lunch, snacks, any kind of coffee, or electrolyte replacement or anything that I'm gonna need, vitamins, whatever, I'll put it in here and then at night I'll hang the food bag so that I can just take this bag out, leave my food bag closed, throw it in my pack and I can eat right out of this bag throughout the day. Works out really good and it keeps me organized, which I definitely need while I'm out on the trail. So I completely forgot about my spoon, but I wanted to go back and make this obviously. So in that bag that I just showed you, I do keep a Tokes long-handled titanium spoon. Now, a year or so ago, I was using a folding toke spoon, which was great. I kept it in my pot, but you know, my, sometimes my hands would get dirty just eating north sides or even mountain house meals, and this just solves all those issues. This thing is fantastic. This is my cook kit. I have a Reflectix pot cozy that I made just to keep everything warm. I can drink my coffee without burning my hands off. It really weighs nothing. It's been awesome. Uh, inside here is a Toke 700 mil pot with a lid. Has some handles on it. Really good. Really like it. It's it boils probably about two and a half cups. Uh, usually I just need two cups, but sometimes every once in a while I just want some more coffee. In here, I'll, this year I tried canister stoves. I, I don't really like canister stoves, but I'm trying to broaden my horizons with you. I'm more of an alcohol stove kind of guy, but I did carry canister, uh, a four season canister, and then the famous BRS titanium stove. The stove weighs about an ounce. It is absolutely amazing. The only downside of this thing is it's loud, but you know, pretty much any canister stove is gonna be loud for you. This stove just happens to be made of mostly titanium, one ounce, and it's about 15 bucks on Amazon. Never had a problem with it. Absolutely love it, except for the noise. Next up is my first aid kit. So I'm gonna go in depth. I'm gonna show you exactly what's in here. So let's go to the table. So as far as the first aid kit, we're keeping it in a Ziploc bag for now. Might change it. We'll get into it in just a second here. Okay, so this is a first aid kit slash emergency kit. So a lot of my gear is Cuban fiber. I carry a big patch and a little strip patch of Dyneema composite fabric. If my tarp gets a hole in it, I'll be able to patch it up. Same with my pack. I'll be able to patch it up in any dry bags that I use as well. Some body glide. I honestly haven't used this in about a year and a half now. I'm thinking about dropping it because I found that baby powder pretty much works better than this stuff. I don't ever get blisters, though I did get one recently, but that was just because my feet were completely saturated with water for an entire two days. I don't think I'm gonna bring this anymore, but it's still listed in the weight for this video. Like I said, some of this is emergency kit, so just in case my lighter gets saturated and I need to start a fire to keep warm, I have a pack of matches right here. For anyone unlucky enough to have to wear contacts, I have an extra contact case with some liquid already in, and so if I need to take them out, I can take them out and put them in here for storage, and I can put them back in with this mirror it also doubles as a signal mirror like i said last year this is non-negotiable it's just something that i feel more confident with it in my pack I always carry some a and d ointment this stuff is great for chafing in conjunction with having some baby powder seriously if you ever had monkey butt look into just putting this on and your life will be so much better this is the foot balm that I'm still using. Still absolutely love it. It's Rocket Pure Hand and Foot Balm. I'm almost out of this stuff, gotta get a new one. Now, I did see some smaller containers on here. It's like chapstick size containers. I only use this stuff now whenever my feet are wet. I was using it every day just because my feet just kind of absorbed it in and moisturized it. But now that it's moisturized, 
I really only use this whenever it's like really rainy or really wet trip. I have some Neosporin and I put them in little straw tubes. And what you do here is you hold one end with a pair of pliers, burn the end, put the Neosporin in and then do the same thing on the other end. So anytime I need to you know, get some Neosporin out, I cut it off and then I burn it. This is really, really light. Uh, I think I ha start with five Neosporin tubes a year and then it just kind of whittles down throughout the, uh, the course of the hiking season. Some ibuprofen. Uh, this is just for an in case emergency, vitamin I. I mean, everybody carries it these days, but I really haven't had to use a lot of these. The last trip I did, just because I was so sore, we were doing a challenge hike and I ended up using a couple pills. I also sprained my ankle, so that was very helpful to have some kind of anti-inflammatory uh, medications, but you know, just a simple pack of ibuprofen and I fill that up after the end of every trip. I need to refill this stock, but I do always carry four pills of Benadryl, if not more. I think I carry six starting out throughout the year. This is just for allergic reactions to bee stings or whatever I find a use for. You should definitely always keep some Benadryl laying around in your first aid kit though. Some Prilosec. Sometimes those, uh, those north sides give me heartburn, especially the, the fettuccine, the one that I really like, fettuccine Alfredo. So just some Prilosec, just keep it around just for heartburn and acid reflux. Also, I need to add some more of these. I've been using these a couple times this year, actually. These are some just anti-diarrhea pills. This is a must for any backpacker. If you get stuck out in the woods and you have diarrhea, not only are you just miserable, but you're also dehydrating your body really fast. So I always keep a couple of these little uh, anti-diarrhea pills in my first aid kit. This is a new addition as of this year. Um, my Sawyer Squeeze a couple trips ago actually lost the O-ring. So I didn't have a, a really good seal with my Evernew bag or a smart water bottle. So I ended up getting another one of these at Home Depot. Well, actually Sawyer ended up sending me one, but the, you can get these at Home Depot. You just gotta bring your water filter up and get the same one. Uh, but yeah, this is always in my first aid kit now because you, you never know. I could have been drinking bad water because I didn't get a good seal. So it's just a little O-ring that I keep. I also have a little safety pin right here. This is for popping any kind of blisters. So if I get a blister, just open this up pop it through the blister, and then squeeze the fluid out. I don't cut the blister off. I let that heal on its own or fall off on its own, but this is def definitely, definitely with me on every single trip, just in case. So while I have you guys down here, we're also gonna go over this. This sits inside my pocket with a couple little like snaps or whatever you wanna call these little buckles on the inside of my pack. This is where I keep my keys, uh, a credit card, some extra cash. It's basically my wallet, so I can just take this out and have a wallet that I can use for resupply in towns, or if I want to go home, I can just take this out of the backpack and I know where everything is. I can't tell you how many times that I've lost my key on previous trips and then just the horrible realization that, you know, where did you leave it and then found it in another place in my pack. So this is where it always stays. I always know where this is. Also in here, I have my Victorinox uh, Swiss Army knife. This thing is just exactly what I need. Uh, it has a pair of tweezers, it has a toothpick, it's just a standard Swiss Army knife, a uh, nail file, you know, just a pair of scissors. It, it's just, just exactly what I need. It's not overboard and this is just, I wouldn't use anything more than this. If you want to carry a big knife, that's totally fine with me, but I've never seen a need to do it in any of my hiking trips. The last thing we're going to talk about while I have you guys down here is my phone. Uh, a lot of people count this as worn weight. I do not. I think, you know, if you're carrying it, you need to list it on your lighter pack as base weight. So I'm carrying this not only for music, because I keep all my music on here now, but I also have several GPS apps, one of them being View Ranger, which I can load GPX maps in here, and it does a great job of either not only tracking my progress, but you know, showing me the terrain, the lay of the land via satellite imagery. So this is kind of like my you know, external GPS. So this is always with me. The system works out great for me. I just keep it in a little Ziploc bag right now, though I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the pills and some of the stuff that I like to use at night 
in a ditty bag, maybe a Cuban fiber ditty bag, and just start storing the, the remainder of the smelly stuff in here inside my food bag. I think that'll work a little bit better for me because I always, for whatever reason, just end up hanging my ibuprofen, my toilet paper, Prilosec, some things that I need throughout the night, and I end up having to wake up in the middle of the night, grab my food bag, and get them down. So I'm hoping having a little ditty bag may be a better option. Next up is my hygiene kit. This is where I keep my toilet paper, my wet wipes, these really help you polish off that rear view mirror and keep you clean. You can also use it to wipe down before you go to bed. Very nice. I keep, this is a new item actually, I keep a titanium, I think it's called a Chi Whiz trowel. Now, the past couple years I've been using just one of my MSR groundhogs. It was working out okay, but there were certain times where it just took forever to dig a cat hole. This thing is amazing. I don't think anyone needs to carry anything bigger than this. This is just so fast when you're in a rush. Um, make a cat hole, obviously, leave no trace. It's just amazing. Titanium poop trowel barely weighs the thing. And then my toothbrush and my little travel toothpaste is also in that bag. All right, food bag is next. This is a Z-Pax food bag. It's part of their bear bagging kit. Um, pretty much, obviously, I put my food in here at night, any kind of smellables. This is uh, Dyneema composite fabric, again, Cuban fiber. No real issues with this. I must have a hole somewhere in this, but you can easily tape it. As, as you know, my first aid kit slash emergency kit, there's some Cuban fiber tape in there. I already have one from a, a squirrel or whatever, a chipmunk chewing on it from last year, but I must have another hole just because it's getting uh, a little wet and I, I, I don't know, I need to shine a flashlight to figure out where that hole is, but easily, easily fixed with Cuban fiber tape. Also in there is part of my bear bagging kit. I have the Z-Pax rock bag, which is great. Um, starting to wear out, but who cares? Whenever this dies, just get another one. I have 50 foot of Lawson Ultra Glide Bear Line. This stuff is reflective. It's really easily seen in the middle of the night or in the morning if you're waking up early. And then just the Z-Pax uh, little carabiner that they give you with the food bag kit. It's been great. Another new addition here is I had these from a hammock suspension that didn't really work for me. I'm in a hammock, obviously, if you couldn't tell. This is a titanium toggle usually used for your webbing on your hammock suspension, but I've been using it just so I don't have to get a stick to shove in for the PCT style hang, which is my hang of choice. I've just been using this little toggle. I think this thing weighs like one or two grams and it just makes my life easier so I don't have to look around for a stick. So this is gonna come with me all the time. It's just so much easier to use. Okay, so now we're getting into the stuff that I like to keep waterproof. I do this by using a uh, it's just a nylo flume bag. It's pretty much polycro that they've, I guess, welded together or something. This is a nylo flume bag. You can get these on Lightsmith for like, I think they're $2 or something, $2.50 each. This lines your whole pack. It's literally perfect. They've been using this for, ah, uh, man, uh, maybe a year and a couple months now. No holes, no punctures, still holds there like a champ. And just, I love this thing. It just keeps everything dry that you want dry. Even with the the Dyneema composite fabric. I know Dyneema itself is pretty much waterproof or Cuban fiber or whatever you want to call it is waterproof, but uh, you know, it does saturate at some point and it loses uh, some stuff on the seams. This is my new hammock as of this year. This is a Dream Hammock Darien. I got this thing down pretty light. I think it's just over a pound or just under a pound. I can't remember. I'm using the Dutchware uh, Poly Pro Nile, I don't know what this is, but this is a uh, really light webbing. Uh, it's a little heavier than a, a whoopee sling, but I just like using cinch buckles. And on the end of that, I have an easy to use uh, Jeff Myers hammock, hammock lab, hammock tech labs, whatever it is. Check out Jeff Myers if you're interested. This is an Evo loop. This allows me to not have to take off the suspension every time and run it through the loop on the end of the strap, but I just make a loop here and just shove that in there with the button knot and it's absolutely perfect. No sharp edges to tear my hammock and I'm using a Z-Pax uh, double-ended, they use it as a tarp stuff sack, but I've been using it as a hammock sack and it works out very, very well. Very light, keeps my hammock waterproof or water resistant, I should say, and if my straps get wet, I can either take them off or run them on the outside and my hammock won't get wet. 
So that's great. Let's see what else is in here. All right, so clothes bag. This is my packed clothes. It's in a medium Z Packs DCF dry bag. It's been working out great. In here, I just have a pair of, um, let's see, these are smart wool liner socks. I use them as sleep socks because sometimes, like I said, I like to use foot balm on my feet. And just to keep my quilts clean, I use these socks. On top of that, I've been really liking, uh, since I switched to a running short with a liner, I found, this was one of the failed attempts at finding a running short that I liked. So what I ended up doing, these are Nike dry fit running shorts. They had a liner in it, but it was way too small. It didn't hold me in at all. So I cut the liner out. This has a lot of mesh around the sides. This just keeps me cool at night. Uh, I just like having the extra breathability that goes along with not having a liner short. This is also can be used for my driving home shorts or my town shorts. So those are great. Uh, also in here, I have, let's get rid of the dry bag. This is part of my electronics bag. Uh, in here, I have a pair of earplugs in case I'm next to something loud, like someone snoring or whatever. It's a pair of earplugs. These are Heroes brand earplugs. Absolutely love them. I, I have a pack of like 100 of these things. Just throw them out whenever they get too gross. I have an Anchor charger. This is a 6700 milliamp. This is way more than I need, but it gives me two full charges on my Google Pixel. And then I have the charging cable as well. So quick disclaimer, whenever I film for YouTube, which is the majority of the time, I'm not including my camera gear. I'm also bringing a bigger charger, a 13,000 milliamp charger actually. But when I do my trips where I'm not filming, this is the exact loadout that I bring and this is the charger that I bring. So just keep that in mind. I'm probably bringing an extra, I'd say about two pounds worth of camera gear. So that is not included in the base weight for obvious reasons. Most people aren't filming for YouTube. This is my new quilt, okay? This is a new quilt as of this year. It's a hammock gear burrow, 40 degree short. I got this quilt because I wanted another 40 degree quilt, first of all. I was using a Lighten Equipment Revelation. Excellent quilt, ended up selling it because I didn't really know what I was doing when I got it, and I got it in a regular, which is like six feet tall. I'm five foot six on my tallest day, and this goes up to five foot seven. So this works out perfect. I saved a little bit of weight, got the same temperature rating, and the only reason I went with hammock gear is because I found a 10% off coupon, and it's pretty much the same uh, warmth rating. Uh, the stitching's fine. Um, I, I don't like either one better than the other. It's just I wanted to try something different. This is a medium Cuban fiber DCF, whatever you want to call it. They really need to pick a name. Um, but this is from Z-Packs. It's really, really light. Uh, I have another one for the under quilt, though I'm thinking about just dropping the stuff sacks altogether. I'll keep the one on my hammock, but you know, the clothes stuff sack, this stuff sack, the top quilt and under quilt stuff sack, I'm thinking about just getting rid of because I just kind of want to shove it down in my, my waterproof liner and just kind of be done with it. So I think that's going to save me just a couple ounces, not even a couple ounces, but just make packing up faster. Okay, again, another Z-Pax medium stuff sack here. We talked about getting rid of stuff sacks already. This is a hammock gear 40 degree Phoenix. It's a three quarter length under quilt. This goes under your hammock at night. I love this thing. It keeps me aired out. Uh, anything over probably 45 degrees, this is super freaking comfortable. And I just love the three quarter length. It allows me to use both pullouts on my hammock and just lets my feet dangle. If I need some extra warmth, what I'll do is I'll use this sit pad underneath my feet and it takes care of the remainder of the insulation issues. Okay, this is my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. This jacket, this puffy, it's good down to about 40 degrees. This comes with me all the time. I don't care if it's 85 degrees out, you never know. Just as a safety blanket, a comfort item. Um, to be honest, I ended up bringing this. It's really light, really warm for the weight and have no problems with it. It's been great. Finally, this is a comfort item that I added this year. This is the Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight. Absolutely no issues with it. I end up only filling this up probably 1 16th of the way because I am in the hammock. Uh, but if I ever need to go to ground, at least I have an extra pillow. 
I did have a pillow dry bag from z -Packs, but this is just a little bit more comfortable and I like having the option to inflate or deflate as needed. So this has been great. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. So just the pack liner that I was talking to you before about, and then, like I said, the backpack we already talked about. The last piece of gear, and I should have talked about this with my first aid kit, but uh, I have the Leckie Carbon TI poles. They're a completely adjustable pole. They're not like a Z pole or anything. Uh, these have been working out pretty good over the years. The only thing I don't like are the grips on these. I just feel like they're too big. On top of that, I also keep some duct tape, some rolls of duct tape. I think I keep like uh, 15 feet, 10 feet per pole or something like that on the pole itself. And with this, as you may have noticed that I don't have any like band-aids in my first aid kit, but I'm already bringing toilet paper, I'm already bringing the duct tape, and I can pretty much craft my own bandages out of this, any size that I need, and that's why I don't bring the bandages. Some people may not like that. Some people may say, well, you need to be sterile. Well, my toilet paper is sterile, and if I really need it to be sterile, I do have those wet wipes that I can put underneath the toilet paper to get a 99.99999% bacteria-free zone. So that's just what I do. So that's it, that's my ultralight backpacking setup. I believe I'm around 8.82 the last time I checked, 8.82 pounds. So getting down there, uh, like I said, I will use my Z-Packs Arc Haul if it's in three season weather, if it's longer than probably like five days or if I wanna carry some extra weight. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the Z-Packs Nero has been great. This is like I said, a new addition for this year. It's been amazing. So I'll keep dialing gear down and I'll keep making these lists. So. For anyone that doesn't know, I'm going to be hiking the Appalachian Trail next year, starting February 23rd. So if you like to see that gear that I'm bringing, I'll have that more toward the January, February range of next year. So thanks everybody for watching. Find time and go on your own adventure. I'll see you on the trail.